This is the Power Five with Cal Lee and Warren Shaw. Welcome, everyone. This is the Power Five. Cal Lee, Warren Shaw of the Baseline NBA podcast as we discuss the top five teams in the NBA. Another exciting week of NBA basketball to evaluate. And once again, someone is getting knocked off the list. I love it, man. I'm like Buster Rhymes. It just changes like the weather. It gives us a reason to discuss who are the top five teams in the association. So I'm not going to waste any time, but roll out the red carpet for my brother from another mother, my right-hand man, 50 grand, writer for www.shawsports.net, the big kahuna, and runs shawsports.net. My man Warren Shaw repping out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Welcome back to the fold, my brother. It's good to be home, man. Good to be home, and I want to say salute, salute to all the fans and listeners of the NBA baseline, you know, make sure you're giving us this rating on iTunes to get my plug in there early. But yeah, man, the Power Five is always fun. And yeah, we're booting a team based on our scoring and rating system here, man. So we'll see if that's going to get the fans out there buzzing a little bit. Well, I l- listen, we have said this before. I don't know if there's going to be much fluctuation between the top three teams. I think it was pretty safe to say, even going into the season, that these guys are going to pretty much hold their ground. And whoever it is that we consider is the best of the best, second best, third best, we just know that at some point we will be able to figure out if the teams that are outside of those three are going to have enough in the tank, are going to make some kind of trade, are going to do something different to categorically put them in that conversation to be better than teams like the Warriors and the Cavs and maybe the San San Antonio Spurs. Each of these teams carry something different to their game, which I think is what's translating that dichotomy for us to dissect and say which one should actually come out on top, which are we going to see be have a collision course to the finals. But most of this conversation is going to fluctuate, you know, after three on down. And once again, Shaw, we we been looking up and down this list, and it just seems like nobody can hold that bot those bottom two positions quite firmly um, as we continue to enter into the course of the season. Yeah, it's it's a real, like you said, a real fluctuation. And I, you said, I think we're going to, you know, maybe even sicken ourselves, you know, talking about maybe that top three in terms of Golden State, San Antonio, and Cleveland. And, you know, that order may or may not fluctuate throughout. But, yeah, the last two positions really seems to be um, something that, you know, it's really going to have a lot of fluctuation. And I'm concerned a little bit, I think, about one one team in particular that, you know, that we're en- going to end up leaving off this list for right now. But, you know, they're, they're still still a, a top team, especially out there in the Western Conference. But, yeah, and it, that's, that's what makes it great. You know, it allows us to have different conversations each week, especially regarding those bottom four and five teams. Most definitely. So make sure you get at my man Shaw at Shaw Sports NBA or get at me at Game Face Lee. Our show, the Baseline NBA podcast, available on all major platforms, available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Microsoft TuneIn, Player FM, Google Music, and also available on the Roku channel. So download any one of those platforms and allow us to be your go-to resource discussing all things NBA, including our Power 5 rankings. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. It's time now to break down the Power 5. Number 5. All right. In at number five, Shaw, new entry. Well, no, maybe not so much as a new entry. It's a team that we definitely had seen coming up. They were on the come up, and they are finally rounding into form. It is not the Los Angeles Clippers. It is not the Oklahoma City Thunder or the Portland Trailblazers or even the Memphis Grizzlies, dude. It's the Toronto Raptors. What do you make of the Toronto Raptors ascending themselves as one of the top five teams in the NBA? Well, still playing amazing basketball. And, you know, as I said, I think last week, you know, rumors of their demise have been greatly exaggerated. This is a team that has figured it out on both ends of the, of the basketball floor. You know, one of the top five teams offensively, middle in the pack defensively, which might be a little bit concerning, but just couldn't see them being this efficient, especially from three and just getting, you know, shots from mid range and Kyle Lowry making those great assists to Martin Rosen has taken another level to his game, which didn't see that coming. Haven't had their power forward all season long and Jared Sullinger just sticking guys in and out of there, but it's worked. And, you know, this is a team that just, they get it done on a regular night basis. Again, the Cavaliers continue to be their nemesis nevertheless, but they just churn wins out, man. And they're starting to really beat people, embarrassing people. You know, last week, you know, winning 124 to 110, then beating the Celtics 101, 94, then beating the Bucks 122 to 100. Just, you know, they're having no mercy going, doing it at home, doing it on the road. This is one one hell of a basketball team and they deserve a lot more 
perspective. Yeah, three out of four games last week, and especially one of them, a divisional game, in which we are continually talking about when will the Boston Celtics start to step up? When will they take that next level? We keep talking about Isaiah Thomas. We talk about the acquisition of Al Hawford. And yet this basketball team has still not figured out a way to better the team that stands ahead of them in their own division. One thing that's interesting when you talk about this Toronto Raptors team, Shaw, you know, we always emphasize about how it's important. You know, there was a time where we used to emphasize how important it was to win divisions. And here this Toronto Raptors team sits at 17 and 7. They're pretty much dominating their division, which has the Boston Celtics and even the New York Knicks, who at this moment in time, as we're recording this podcast, sits second in that division. And you just begin to wonder, when will the relevancy of this Toronto Raptors team as being the front runner for the Atlantic division start to mean something as we start talking about upper echelon basketball teams for the Eastern Conference playoff picture. I just like the fact that this is a Raptors team that gets the job done against all of the teams, even though it's not against the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're doing it against everyone else, which is making them a virtual lock to be probably the second best team in the Eastern Conference. Number four. At number four, new entry, hot take, hold the presses. I can't believe it. Houston we definitely have a problem. The Houston Rockets have entered as a top five team in the NBA. Oh, believe James Harden is cooking something. It's unbelievable. Really, I can't understand how this team is so good in terms of their record. We knew they were going to score points. That wasn't going to be an issue. You know, James Harden is a you know, perennial MVP candidate, all of those things. But without really even trying to play a lick of defense, ranked 21st currently as we record this show and defense rating, this team is on a, is on a great winning streak, you know, 18-7 again as we record and, you know, just knocking teams out. And it's, it's amazing to me because you wouldn't think without, you know, Dwight Howard in the middle there, Clint Capella is, 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 is a capable backup. But James Harden and Capella have some sort of chemistry right now that is, you know, we haven't really seen in, in a long time from a, an upper echelon player in Harden and kind of a role player in, in Capella. And then Eric Gordon has really started to find his strokes in the last, you know, five or seven games or so, averaging over 20 points per game and coming up the bench. Brian Anderson still really hasn't gotten consistently going. So that to me is a little bit concerning because they can still get a little bit better when it comes to offense. Oh, man. Let me tell you something. Kudos to Mike D'Antoni. He's done it again. He's pulled off the sequel to The Italian Job before The Italian Job had its own sequel, bro. This is amazing to me. He did it in Los Angeles, pulling off the greatest heist of hype I've ever seen, trying to coach the Los Angeles Lakers team that should have been coached by Phil Jackson. Then he comes in and he basically is wrecking shop with the Houston Rockets. Now, we've seen this before with the Houston Rockets a few years ago, right? This is the same basketball team under Kevin McHale, without Dwight Howard that as far as the basketball team collectively coming together and and honing in on one thing that was going to obviously help them overachieve and that was play defense lo and behold the mastermind of offense Mike D'Antoni has figured out these guys to play offense in overdrive and they're proving it each and every single night they beat an Oklahoma City Thunder team at Oklahoma City. They beat down the Dallas Mavericks who are just absolutely a shell of themselves this year. And then they also proved that they can run with even the youngest of young teams beating the Los Angeles Lakers. This is an impressive run, I have to say, by the Houston Rockets. And it is led by arguably right now, the person who probably is superseding the Brody in James Harding as being an MVP. And as long as he continues to do the things that he's doing, this team can easily eclipse 50 wins this season and make them a formidable threat as one of the mid-tier teams. And let's also keep something in mind. We talk about the offensive efficiency of the Golden State Warriors. This is the same team that beat the Golden State Warriors at home in overtime. So let's not get it twisted. When it comes from offense to offense, Mike D'Antoni might dial up something that might make this team a actual threat to the Warriors because the Warriors don't play the same type of defense as they've done before. Number three. Third best team in the NBA, Shaw, the San Antonio Spurs. Steady ship as they go, led by Kawhi. You know what I'm saying? The claw, the bear claw. They've got their paws back on and embraced that role of being a top three team in the NBA. And it doesn't look like they're letting go anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely not. And I think this is even with a little bit of a, a, a slower stretch for Kawhi. He, you know, took... I want to say he took games off, but he just wasn't producing at the same clip that he started off the season. But now he's back to that, you know, back in his 28 to 30 points a game, um, you know, which, again, is, is extremely high for him. And But the thing to me, you know, talk about a system, and we understand who the Spurs are and everything like that, but 
They're winning games with LaMarcus Aldridge not really playing all that well. Kyle Pacasol still really not playing all that well. I mean, again, they're, they have nice numbers, but, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge at 16 and a half and six rebounds, like, that's that doesn't really say anything to me. <laughs> it really is like, I just don't know how they're doing it. You know, Dwayne Dedman comes out there and he gives them plus minutes. Then, you know, Danny Green's finally come back. And he's starting to get his stroke back a little bit as well, too. We had the Jonathan Simmons run to begin the year. He's cooled off, but it's just like different guys kind of pick up the pace a little bit here, here and there. Kawhi's been the most steady of all the players on this roster. But outside of him, there's nobody that's been amazing. And that really shows you how how amazing Coach Popovich is because this team is still right up there at the top. I mean, this is the one basketball team, like if you actually made an, a, a comparative analogy to them, they're the basketball team that is just actually happy earning minimum wage. I think we all recall when Greg Popovich called out his team. He's like, if you're a plumber, do your job. He's like, you come to basketball, I don't have to give you a pep talk. I expect you to come out and do your job. Be motivated to do your job. These guys will love to do their job, even if you basically gave them a pink slip because they see their eye on the prize. They work within the system. They are effective within the system. And when the system is working, it could basically be one of the most unstoppable forces. They're like the Death Star, basically, in a Star Wars type of comparison. But you know what's going to be interesting, Shaw? As we talk about the Houston Rockets, who have entered in as the fourth best team, you know, there's going to come a point where they're going to have to play the San Antonio Spurs. And I cannot wait for that matchup because we've been talking about how the San Antonio Spurs are not quite the same team defensively, even though now they're starting to find their niche and Kawhi Leonard so much so, much so is becoming that dude. I cannot wait. December the 20th, guys, mark it on your dockets. The San Antonio Spurs take on the Houston Rockets, the two top teams in the Southwest, and the fight for Texas is on. Number two. All right, the number two team in the NBA. What can we say? Steady as she goes when you have the king, low and, and on the profile tip, the Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron James continually doing their thing. And even if Tyron Lou decided to say, I'm going to rest all five of my starters, they probably still have a team that is formidable enough to beat most of the other teams in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, that's so funny that you mentioned that because that's the part of the season that we're already at right now. I think Cleveland is like, all right, well, we had a little stretch where they lost three straight and now they're back on the right back on task and like all right well, let's rest some guys now let's you know let's go out here and play with hey, all right two like, of our three these stars. guys are these guys are hot they're like they're just pummeling teams again and oh i think we're just resting yeah and you know honestly i mean we knew what we we're going to get from lebron i think his assists are up from a season ago um and his points might be up a little bit as well too especially compared to this time last year where he was i think he was you know taking some time off and all of that he's he come out and come out like gangbusters and has done what he's had to do Kyrie has been pretty fairly consistent, but obviously I think the guy that we're all pointing to is Kevin Love. I think I was asked preseason, you know, who's going to be the guy when LeBron takes off? Everyone's like, oh, it's got to be Kyrie. And I was like, well, actually, no. It's <laughs> Kyrie, as a young guy, he's kind of an old young guy because he always seems to be banged up and, you know, has these nagging injuries. I was like, they're going to lean on Kevin Love. And sure as, you know, sure as, as rain, Love has come out here and has been amazing this entire season, averaging a double-double, you know, 20 and 10 plus. Just, just a great season for him. Shooting threes, had, you know, that 30-point quarter or whatever it was a couple weeks ago. Again, just awesome, amazing for them to have this. And J.R. Smith now is also starting to come around a little bit as well. Now, listen. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We don't often talk about head coaches when you know when they come into situations like what Tyron Lue came in. Remember, um, David Black he gets excused. Tyron Lue figures out a way in half of a year to get this team to play at the highest level in the most critical situation and achieve something that the organization and the franchise hasn't been able to achieve ever in its existence. Okay. Then he comes back in the second time, in the second go around, and we think, all right, let's start seeing some of these sophomore head coaching conundrums that some of these guys seem to endure. Let's look for that championship hangover. And Tyron Lou has figured out a way to still get the best out of his players to get them to execute. And now look at where they sit. As we record this show, they're 18 and five in their in, in basically they already have a six game lead in their own division, a division which is supposed to be pretty competitive. When you look at you got the Bulls, you got the Pacers, you got the Pistons and you got the Milwaukee Bucks. And oh, by the way, the second best team in their conference, the Toronto Raptors, a team that they have already taken the series. So even if they walk away tied as the two top teams in the Eastern Conference, the tie goes to the Cleveland Cavaliers. So there you go. 
he has already gotten these guys to understand the bigger picture. Take care of your business early, and now you will redeem them with the greatest gift that you can give any basketball player as we start entering into the second quarter of the season. Give them some rest. Kudos to Tyron Liu. He clearly knows what he's doing. He is definitely the protege heir apparent to Doc Rivers when the time presents itself. Number one. Finally, Shaw, the number one team in the NBA. And what more can be argued? What more can be said? The fastest team to 20 wins. One of the most offensively potent and efficient basketball teams. Golden State Warriors, number one. Yeah, easy money sniper. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, just going out here and getting things done. Draymond, you know, putting up triple doubles. And, you know, and, and, and dapping the opposition when they make when they make turnaround jumpers look easy. That's how good they are, yo. Like, the other opposition needs to show you, prop, show you props in-game, you know, not even after the game. Just, again, this Golden State Warriors team has everything going for them, especially from an offensive side of things. But, you know, they, they've actually snuck into the top 10 in defensive rating at, at number 10. Um, and, you know, I just there's not a lot, not many more superlatives you can say about this roster as they just continue to churn these wins out. Had a little bit of a rush, rough stretch last week. You know, they had a loss and then, you know, oh, it looked like they were about to lose another game. They looked like they were about to lose another game, but came back in, in the game. Um, against uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves, you know, and, and not, then let that one fall. And again, this team just knows how to get things done because they have so, so much superior talent. Steve Kerr has everybody where they need to be. Doesn't matter who he plugs and plays out there. They all produce, whether it's Ian Clark or whoever coming off the bench. This, game, this team just really makes a lot of people happy just to watch because they're just so much fun and you just, you can never really count them out because of the three ball. I'm getting to the point where I don't care about the wins as much as I'm caring about the, the level of execution with this basketball team. Because there's going to come a point where they're going to kind of lull themselves into playing the same teams that aren't playing to the way that they play like to me one of the things that I've noticed is is that when the Warriors get comfortable in playing the way that they want to play and dictating the way that they want to dictate the games there's no other team that makes adjustments not even the Cleveland Cavaliers last year in the NBA Finals it was only until a circumstance that was really out of their hands that forced the Warriors to make certain adjustments and changes and things of that nature even forcing Steve Kerr to kind of coach outside of his own element is when we start to see this this Golden State Warriors team look shook. I don't think that even in the four losses, the, because it's feast or famine with this basketball team, they're either going to look superlative and absolutely unstoppable, or they're going to look like a basketball team that's totally taken themselves out of basketball games and checked out or just not playing, executing. Chris. This isn't a question of effort. To me, it's just a question of this, this team's mindset and making sure that they are executing the things that they need to execute and ultimately imposing their will, forcing the other basketball team to think on their level. I've talked about this a few times before, Sean, when we've done our show. This is one of the smartest basketball teams in the NBA. And there's going to come a point where LeBron James is going to have to figure out once again, um, uh, Kawhi Leonard is going to have to figure out once again, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, those dudes, they're going to have to figure out once again how to upgrade their Einsteinium mentality of how to outplay the Golden State Warriors because if this team executes the way that they're capable of executing, 140, 160 points is just going to be an afterthought when you look at the efficiency numbers that this team produces on a night-in, night-out basis. And there you have it, the top five teams in the NBA, the Baseline NBA Podcast, Power 5. Once again, we appreciate you and yours for checking in with us. My man Warren Shaw and I giving you the goods discussing the top five teams. Any parting thoughts, Shaw, about our five? I'm good with my five. Are you good with this five? I mean, I'm good with it. I mean, you know, I think we well, obviously we left out the L.A. Clippers who are, you know, still right there at the top. I think they left themselves out, though. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they've hit a they little bit of a rough they, patch. They, did not help, they have not helped their cause over the last week or so. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess that'd be it. Comparing them to a top five team, I guess not. I mean, yeah. they're still obviously very, very good. And, you know, they're definitely one of the elite teams in the, in the West. But, yeah, they had a, had a little bit of a rough rough patch. You know, the defense has slipped, as I think as we've been alluding to, maybe in the last couple of weeks. Um, they're not as elite as, as you would have hoped. Blake missed a game here and there, what the case may be. But, you know, I think this is this is a team that we don't necessarily have to worry about when it all comes down to things. They'll, they'll figure it out. Doc will have to get this team on the right back, right track again. The bench will get to get back playing. You know, they had some issues with Austin Rivers as well. But I think this is a team that, again, they're going to be just fine and will, they should be in the conversation the entire season. You know, the Los Angeles Clippers, 
They have looked like a top five team at times. And then at times they've looked like a team that just likes to kind of get by or get, you know, just squeak into the top 10. And, you know, again, I lend to the idea that I weigh heavily on the fact that when these guys are playing in prime time against an above 500 team, my expectation is, is that they should go out and get the job done. We'll see how they fare come next week. But nonetheless, definitely makes for some interesting conversation now that we have a few more teams ready to try and attack that top five. For the baseline, Cal Lee, Warren Shaw, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to tune in to us, the Baseline NBA podcast, each and every single week. We definitely appreciate a shout out and definitely give us a rating. Subscribe to us and definitely catch us on the flip side. For the baseline, Kyle Lee, Warren Shaw, we appreciate you guys.